From athletics to football, he was given a last chance in 2020 and ran with it and hasn't looked back since. And Moore makes no mistake. An up-and-coming star of the competition, but an older statesman of the Young Hawks. He is revelling in his role of the Hawthorne excitement machine. Next. Hello and welcome to Knockoffs, brought to you by Pepper Jack Wines. I'm Richo and I'm thrilled to have this next man with me today. He's part of a Hawthorne Ford line that is absolutely sizzling through this competition at the moment, the Mosquito Fleet, and I'm talking about Dylan Moore. Dylan, thanks for coming in, mate. Our pleasure. I'm a little bit surprised at what you've got there, though. <laughs> what, what, the skinnies, what's happening? I know, Sam will not be happy with me, but I thought I'd just order some brownies, some berries, some chocolate. Excellent. I'll eat most of that. That'll go down there with the uh, Cabernet uh, Shiraz down the end there from Pepper Jack. Mate, thanks for uh, coming in today. Before we get on to the Hawks, you were a massive Hawks fan as a kid, is that right? Yeah, grew up loving the Hawks. Uh, my dad, massive Hawks fan, so is my sister. So we all grew up supporting the Hawks. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. The players that I was watching, I'm now playing with and getting coached by. So yeah, it's amazing. Who were your idols at Hawthorne as a kid? Sam actually hates this because my favourite player was Luke Hodge. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Hodgie would love uh, that. So I loved Hodgie and I also loved Buddy. Like, I just couldn't stop how watching can, Buddy. How can't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's one of my favourites. Mate, uh, watching you play, you, you thrive on your, your work rate to the contest. So doing a bit of research for this, you know, to find out you were a champion uh, runner as a kid, you really enjoyed athletics growing up? I wouldn't say I was a champion. I was, um, yeah, I was a big cross country runner, yeah. to be honest. At the start of like primary school, I always just did cross country yeah. and um, I kept doing that. I play, yeah, do cross country on a Saturday, then play footy on a Sunday. And yeah, all through junior football, I did athletics in the summer and yeah. I just tried to get fit for footy pretty much. Pre season, good pre season. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't actually do a football pre season until I was 15 because yeah. I was too busy doing athletics and I think that really helped me, helped me with my work rate. And yeah. Yeah, it's carried on. Mate, you always wanted to be a footballer though. You went to a bit of a footy factory at Caulfield Grammar. You were touted to be a, a really high pick. Did it surprise you a bit when you got out to 67? You wouldn't have been surprised when Hawthorne picked you. You would have been wrapped, but did that drive you on a little bit? Yeah, for sure. It was, it was a bit of a strange one draft night because, yeah, I, my manager said, you're probably going to go around 20 to 30. And yeah, um, yeah I was kind of expecting that. And as the picks kept going, yeah. I was getting a bit more and more nervous and I reckon I was sitting on the couch with my family and it was around pick 50, 55 and teams started passing. I was like... So you're getting nervous then? Yeah, yeah. Is, am I actually going to be able to live out my dream? And then, yeah, luckily at pick 67, it was actually a real surprise because I only spoke to Hawthorne once throughout the year at um, the draft combine and it wasn't a big chat, it was just yeah. five minutes and yeah, really grateful in the end to land at the Hawks. What did they say when they, they picked you up? What were the traits that they loved? Mainly my work rate and my work ethic. Yeah. So they just thought that I'd shown enough throughout the year that I've got a tank to be able to play AFL football, but yeah, I was small, I was lean. I came in at 64 kilos. Yeah. So um, to then be able to impact at AFL pretty quick was going to be tough. So yeah. I had to really build my strength um, coming to the yeah. AFL. Because you won the 2K at the combine. What was your time? Uh, 6.04, I Jeez, think. That's quick. I, um, I was actually the record holder because it was the first year they did it, so right. everyone's beating me now. Yeah, but okay. Little... But what about that 604? So your 302Ks, I know you would have watched the marathon at the Olympics. They do it for 42Ks. It's incredible, isn't oh, it? It's insane. I was um, watching TikToks around the time and it was people trying to keep up with the marathon yeah. runners and they're running a three kilometre pace. Unbelievable. Mate, your first few years at the Hawks, it, it was a work in progress. It, it took some time. You played in a premiership at Box Hill in 2018. Um, you know, you had some challenges to get there early days. Yeah, for sure. I think 2018 was a massive year for me, to be honest. Yeah. I started the VFL with Chris Newman as my coach and played two games and actually played well my first two games, but then I fractured my shoulder and was out for 10 weeks. And that's when the club was like, yeah, you need to get your body right to be able to play AFL because it's not even right to play VFL, you're not strong enough. So I spent, yeah, 10 weeks in rehab, getting my body right and actually moved from a wing to a forward line because we just needed more forwards yeah. at that time. And yeah, luckily enough, we won first final, second final, third final, and then we got into a grand final that year. And to be able to win a premiership in my first year 
2018 and be able to perform in finals yeah. as well. It gave yeah, me a lot of well. yeah, it gave me a lot of confidence going into the next year. So you get up to the hub up in Queensland in, in 2020. Is it, this is a true story that you, you were struggling a little bit and you were basically given one last chance in the Hawthorne senior team or there was a chance you may be delisted. Is that how it actually happened? Yeah, it was, it was a tough year. We, we started out in Sydney and I was playing pretty good footy, but we were playing 14 v 14 on a soccer pitch with yeah. cones. And, and you were playing for other clubs? Yeah, I was. I, I remember we were playing out in GWS, their training facilities. I kicked a goal for, G, for Hawthorne. Yeah. And then runner comes out, put this on, put a GWS guernsey and go into the back pocket. So it's bizarre. I was, yeah, luckily enough, I remember the second last game of the year, we played doggies. And at half time, he said, Clarko went, go and tag Caleb Daniel. Right. Caleb Daniel got two Brownlow votes. And then the last game of the year, yeah, pretty much got a lifeline. It was pretty much just do or die. If I don't perform, I definitely won't be at the Hawks next year and I might not play AFL again. You got a Brownlow medal vote. So. Yeah, got, got a Brownlow medal yeah. vote and kind of kicked off my career. Mate, the rest is history. You're a great watch the last couple of years. Playing at half forward to average what you do, 20 possessions and a goal, it's just about unheard of. They're really a, elite numbers. You must be really proud of yourself over the last few seasons and now being part of just a great Hawthorne forward line. Yeah, I, I am proud that I've been able to play consistent AFL football and I've been able to um, have some really good people around me that have helped me get there. And yeah, now I feel like this is the most fun I've had playing yeah. AFL right now. The four line group, even the whole club, like it's a great vibe at the moment and I'm really enjoying my time with the Mosquito Fleet and we're all just buzzing around down there, it's great. Yeah, and I think I think people are enjoying watching it. Yeah, you can see the joy that you're bringing the fans, but people from other clubs are loving watching it. Was it Hockball, I think it's <laughs> called it. I'm an old man, I call it <laughs> Hockball, but apparently yeah. it's Hockball. But it's exciting to watch um, this year. You've, been, you've exceeded expectations in the competition for sure. Yeah, it, it's funny that um, people write you off and they write you off pretty quickly but then as soon yeah. as uh, you start climbing up the ladder everyone gets on board and to be honest we, we've been leaning into that and we're enjoying that everyone's kind of coming with us for the yeah. ride and the momentum is we feel like as a young side that we are is we're all over social media we see everything so yeah. why hide that why go away from that when we can just ride it with them and um, we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves but we know that our football stacks up and we're having a lot of fun doing it. Is it true you've got a little black book that you've, you had through your journey and you used to write down notes you know people say they don't listen to the media they don't read things but as you just said social media you can't ignore it you write things down just as a sort of inspiration for yourself? Yeah it's it's a funny story where it started when Sam took over tanking all of that right. trading out players and we felt like no one had belief in us so people would send me some screenshots and i'd keep receipts of a few a few people few articles just writing us off and yeah. yeah i did keep a little black book but as part of my growth this year i've actually got rid of it yeah and spend a bit of time with our psych and a few people around the club it's when people when you start playing better football people aren't going to be writing you guys off yeah. so what's the motivation going to be is you can't be using this as motivation when you're on top of the ladder. So yeah. Um, yeah, I got rid of it this year. It's still hiding away in my room, but yeah, now it's more we're leaning into positivity and yeah. people that don't go with us and so be it. Sam Mitchell was a champion player, so competitive, so skillful. Tell us about him as a coach. What do you love about him as a coach? I think the belief he instills in all of us. He's got the best football IQ in the game, yeah. in my That's opinion. That's how he played, yeah. And he knew his weaknesses, but he knew his strengths and he worked on his strengths more than his weaknesses. And yeah. that's what he instills as us. It's just so much belief in your weapons. And he talks a lot about play to your weapons. And I think I love that about him is he doesn't worry about, oh, I'm not a great left foot kick. It's, mate, you just keep working well and yeah. you, your work rates up, your skills will then follow. And um, I love that. Bruce, Luke Bruce, he's, one of the all-time great small forwards, he's going to kick over 500 goals. I mean, that's elite company, Milne and, and Farmer and guys like this. He's your mentor. What have you learnt of him? Yeah, he's been enormous for me. Um, we call him Punky. He's, he's such a good person. And I think on and off the field, he's taught me so much, just being a good person. And um, on the field, he's, he's so wise. He's so smart as a footballer. Yeah. And he's, he's taught me a lot, to be honest. I just started as a midfielder through juniors. and. A lot of my thinking was see ball, get ball, just yeah. get to contests. But the way he's transformed my game is to think about smart work rate rather than yeah. just work rate. So all of his little tips and tricks in the four line with crumbing, 
body positioning, um, all those little things, even with dribbling or set shots. Yeah. He's he's taught me 50% of my game, I'd wow. say. So um, he's been so big for me. So you got that small forward line. Obviously, Ginevan's come in this year, and McDonald and you know McKenzie's a small forward as well. What a great trait to have Bruce down there to teach all of you. But I want to talk about Ginevan. What's he brought to the group? Because I, I look at you and I think you may be a little bit more conservative in nature. Jack's out there. You know, he's always been out there right from day one. What do you love about him? Yeah, it, it's funny because we are quite different with that. Is he'll do all these goal celebrations and I'll be... I celebrate, but not really to the crowd. But he's actually taught me to lean into that. And I was yeah. speaking about it before. Yeah. Lean into the crowd and use that energy to then motivate yourself a little bit. So I've actually learned that off him is ride the wave. Like yeah. people will either love you or hate you, but if they love you, keep riding that. And um, he's been yeah, great for us down in the four line because one thing he's done is talk about big moments in games and Bruce won a premiership yeah. six, seven years ago, gave him one one last year. So um, he's really knows right now what it takes to win a premiership. So he's taught us a lot there. You've got some tools around you. You've got Marby Orchol, who's come across this year, and I think he's exceeded expectations. He's been outstanding. Then Kalsha Deer in his first year, and Jack Gunston. It's a real mix there with your tools, isn't it? Yeah, um, they're all great, though. I've been surprised by Marbs as well, to be honest. I didn't realise how good pressure he puts on. And mm. even throughout the preseason, I was like, I wonder how he's going to go. But every game he plays, the more belief I have in him, the trust I have in him that when the ball is in the air, he's going to fly, but when it hits a deck, he's going to do the exact same thing. And Kalsha, first year, to come in and probably average nearly a goal in half a game, he's, he's doing a lot well. And then Gunson, I think, rounds him out really well because he's so smart. He doesn't have the athletic profile that those two have, but how smart he is, he's been able to use his tricks to them. I think I look at this year and when Hawthorne really started peaking, it was Will Day, and I believe you live with Will. Good combination. What's he like to live with at home, Will? Yeah, um, he's not the greatest housemate with chores, <laughs> I'll say that. He's a bit lazy around a bit the house. bit lazy around the house. But no, I love having him. We, we go home and we talk footy for a little bit and then we just, we're just us. We sit on the couch, we watch TV together. Uh, but yeah, I love living with Will because yeah, pretty much everything that's happened in the club, we'll just ask each other if we're in good form. We'll speak about it. If we're in poor form, we'll speak about it as well. So it's great to lean on him. Mate, I believe outside of footy, you're a bit of a financial nerd and you're into the <laughs> NFTs and the crypto. Tell us about the LeBron James uh, NFT that you bought. I, I will not be giving any financial advice around <laughs> crypto because I've done that a little bit at the club and the boys haven't been too happy with me because of, yeah, this LeBron. But you bought, bought one and then it went right up and then come right back down, right? Yeah. Short stories, NBA Top Shot, I think it was like three or four years ago. Yeah. I bought a card and I bought it for $300, yeah. this one card, LeBron. And bargain it was like a pretty rare. LeBron. Yeah, bargain. That's what yeah. I thought. And then within a week, that card went up to about 20K. Wow. And everyone was like, what are you going to do? Are you going to sell? I'm like, nah, nah. Like, Got this greedy. is going to 50K. <laughs> it's going to 100. And I still haven't been able to sell it. So oh, I've lost 300 it. bucks. Oh, well, good luck with that. Thanks for joining us today, mate. Got a bottle of uh, Pepper Jack there to take home. Good luck uh, with the Hawks. Absolutely flying. Appreciate your time today. Appreciate it, Richo. Thanks. Well, there you go. That's it for this year on Knockoffs. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm Matthew Richardson. Join me, Cal Toomey, and me, Riley Beveridge, every Wednesday on Gettable, the definitive source of everything you need to know for player movement, trade, free agency, draft, and contracts. Watch Gettable every Wednesday or catch it as a podcast wherever you listen.